Brexit. We're shocked, we're worried, and some of us are angry. So just what is going on with our money? So are we headed for recession? Well, when the Chancellor says, I want to reassure the British people, it can have the adverse effect. And this week, George looks unusually grey. We think it inevitable that the UK economy will slow, at least in the short term, and many money bigwigs think a recession is on the cards. Here's my view on how it might play out for us and our money. OK, things have slumped, but that's predictable. Markets don't like surprises. They're a hysterical bunch, and this is as much about emotion and feeling as it is about facts. The FTSE 100 shrieked on Friday and reached for her smelling salts, and things fell by about 9%. But she calmed down later in the day, and things were only off by about 4%. Come Monday, and the FTSE 100 was down a further 2.5%. Banks and airlines have had a drubbing, yes. So the market is falling. Crashing around our ears? No. The FTSE 100 is basically the 100 biggest firms in the UK, and many of them are actually much more influenced by what happens in whopping big markets like America and China than what happens in Europe. This has protected many of us from bigger falls. If you're saving up with a long-term intent, then times like this are when some people think about buying, not selling. I took a deep breath and topped up some investments as markets fell further on Monday. But I'm not cocky enough to think I've called the low point. I suspect I haven't. And anyway, trying to time the market on an ongoing basis is a mugs game. But I'd much rather buy when things are cheap than when they're riding high. In summary, the FTSE 100 is more about Beijing than Berlin, and it's weathered the course OK to date, but we're not through this yet. Smaller British firms are likely to struggle. The little fellas are getting a bit hammered out there. And international investments have been helped by the weaker pound, although Brexit jitters have made it over the Atlantic and rattled the US markets too. Buckle in for a bumpy ride, but I wouldn't run for the hills just yet. When something's out of favour or a bit uncool, its price goes down. It's the same with sterling. It's fallen strongly, it's at a 31-year low, and I think there's some way left to go yet. Here's a few reasons why. Imagine some hotshot in America wondering where to stick his dollars. He's shopping around for bank accounts. He can come to England and get a poxy half a percent, or he can go to Uzbekistan and get 20%, or Turkey and get 9%. Look, they're extreme examples, but you get the point. The UK looks like a limp squib, so he doesn't come here, he doesn't need pounds. Second up, imagine some bigwig investor in Dubai. Would you invest in the shares of a country undergoing a short-term implosion, with someone like Nigel Farage calling some of the shots? Not really. What about an international property investor who's got cold feet because of our political shambles? So you don't buy our shares, you don't want our apartments, and you don't need our pounds. These are just a few of the reasons why something like Brexit impacts sterling. All this political risk around makes us as attractive as someone with acne at the school disco. People just don't want us so much. So what does this mean for us? Well, if you need to buy euros or dollars this summer for a holiday, you'll be stung, and our imports will be more expensive, so our cost of living will go up. I expect inflation to rise. Interest rates are incredibly low, but remember this isn't because of Brexit. Keeping rates low is the Bank of England's attempt to give us commercial Viagra and send us out on the business equivalent of a heady Friday night. Spend, 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 folks, because the economy's slow and it needs a boost. The guys in charge are concerned, and if anything, they might cut rates even further. Negative interest rates aren't out of the question, so I don't expect mortgage costs to rise at all. Lots of people are wondering about what this means for buying houses or selling them, and unhelpfully, the experts disagree on what the outlook is. Supply of housing remains incredibly low. There's not enough to go around, so in theory, this keeps prices high. But there are those who fear that this exodus and brain drain we might see from the city will dampen prices across the capital. We might also see foreign investors selling their buy-to-lets as Britain generally becomes less appealing. Even Foxtons have issued a profit warning and its shares dropped by 20% on Monday. So what does this mean for us? Well, it's hard to call this one. 
For buyers, we might well see lower interest rates moving forward, and the extent of any slowdown in housing prices depends mostly on how much we bottle it and talk ourselves out of buying, forcing prices down. Don't panic, guys. This is a different scenario to 2007, 2008 and the Lehman's collapse. For now, savers have got no new reasons to worry. We're still in the EU today and the government protection of our bank accounts of up to 75 grand remains in place. I've done nothing with any of my savings accounts so far and I don't plan to, other than trying to make sure I continue to look for the group with the least feeble rates. Although the fall in sterling might well lead to inflation, as I've said I would expect interest rates to stay still or even fall over coming months as the Bank of England tries to keep us all confident. I think this is going to be a really tough 12 months for cash savers and rates are going to remain almost insultingly low. Most pension savers will have a large chunk of their money allocated to the UK stock market, so we shouldn't be surprised to see the value of our workplace or private pensions fall by up to about 10% over the course of this month. However, as our mums might say, I think this is just a phase we're going through. Keep cool. If you're saving into a pension, this could be a good time to stick some money in, as any future cash-strapped government could easily look to cut the tax relief we enjoy on pensions today. Final salary schemes will feel a whole new world of pain as markets fall. Put simply, the gap between the amount they have to pay out and the amount they've got gets bigger. This will heap more pressure on these guys, so watch this space. For those of you who have retired and are in drawdown, in other words, taking an income from the pension after retirement and selling down your assets for this income, if you can possibly avoid it and don't need the money now, it's not the best time to sell investments. Try and draw on any cash reserves you've got rather than selling things in such turbulent times. Finally, annuity rates are likely to remain rubbish for some time and they are falling today. If you're looking for an annuity, get your skates on and get a quote. So, deep breath, I don't think it's Armageddon as some feared, but I do think a potential recession looms and we're in for a tougher time of it, especially over the next few years. The stock market's going to be bouncing up and down for months to come, so I wouldn't try and play smarty pants and continually try and time the market. If you're an investor, drip feeding little bits in often probably makes sense. I really wouldn't worry about interest rates going up, I don't see that. And for now, the housing market is stable as long as confidence remains okay. Savers? Well, we're pretty screwed and returns on cash remain low. Sorry guys, there's no nice way to say that. And the pound? It's like a mullet hairdo. Unloved and uncool and don't expect that to change anytime soon. Not great news. Sorry, don't shoot the messenger.